time. This is Wretched Radio. A number of stories for your consideration as we endeavor to be good biblical discerners. This, did I mention is Wretched Radio? Yeah, I think I, I, I can't discern if I said that or not already. Joey! Tony, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Stop judging. You can't touch God's anointed or something like that. Some scenarios. That escalated quickly. No, you got to say touch not because that sounds even more Bible-y. Touchest thou not. How's that? You got that Overkill, but I'm with you. Some scenarios that will help us to apply rules of discernment this is so important this needs to, this needs to be taught the defense of the truth that the, that the that the bible is well worth sometimes arguing over lovingly of course but we are to be defenders of the truth we just don't want to do it crummily that's right i said crummily scenario number 1 matilda is a christian she appears to be growing in holiness She comes to church, rarely misses, frankly, volunteers in the nursery. She attends two Bible studies. One Sunday, you pull into the parking lot of the church and you overhear Matilda speaking to her seven-year-old son rather sharply. Do you address it with Matilda? And I think the answer is, okay, what do you guys think? Would you address it with Matilda? Hey! You little brat, get over here right now. Get into church. Do you have to address that with Matilda? What say you, Tony? What say you, Joey? Head shakes don't get the job done on radio. How many years have you been doing this, Tony? A couple of I I, No, I wouldn't bring it up. Isolated incident, maybe? I don't know enough. And it's a one-off. We're not the sin police. If If we are doing that constantly, let me tell you something. We wouldn't even have enough time to gossip about people in church if we were constantly pointing out everybody's flaws. And that would be a great loss, wouldn't it? Love should overlook a multitude of sins. Scenario number two. Wait a second. Forgot another voice. Joey, would you have corrected Matilda for that? I would have dropped the hammer like Thor. (laughs) (laughs) Scenario number two. (laughs) It's Monday. You're driving to work. You pull up next to Matilda's van. She's, she's a very busy woman, this Matilda. And while you can't hear her, you can see that Matilda is yelling at her son. On Tuesday, you have to call Matilda to ask her for her grandmother's amazing pound cake recipe. And before Matilda puts the phone to her mouth, you hear her screaming, Shut up! Mommy's on the phone! Wednesday, you're at church. Something we Christians used to do. You watch Matilda fiercely grab her son's arm as she rips him out of the pew to take him into the back of the church to have a special chat. Do you now approach Matilda? Joey, Tony, what say you? You know, my first instinct that maybe this is wrong, uh, but I would probably address a pastor or an elder for wisdom. I don't think that's a terrible idea to to ask for wisdom. I, I I don't. But let me just let me just suggest though there are some things that we can think through because in this instance it's probably time to say something to Matilda and most church discipline should happen in the hallway and in classes and out for brunch. That that's when we disciple one another. We can rebuke one another. You can go directly to Matilda. Now, if you need wisdom because it's a complex situation, that's that's fine. But I don't think that the the initial position should be, hey, pastor, good sermon. I need to talk to you about Matilda. How's about we assume something's off with Matilda? Remember, we want to be thinking, okay, I got I must be confused about all of this. So I could approach Matilda. I could start with a compliment like Paul always did. Hey, Matilda, you know, I've been watching you. You have been growing so much here. I sure do appreciate your service in the nursery. Grateful for that. You're always in Bible study. That's such an encouragement to us. And I, I, I can just tell you're walking with the Lord. 
so that's that's why I'm I'm kind of curious. Now I'm going to ask a question. I'm not going to make a render a verdict on Matilda. She's a sister, remember? So I ask her. So I'm just curious. It seems so uncharacteristic. A mul- multitude of times I've I've heard you kind of upset with your kids. Are you a horrible mother or what? Wrong question. How's about so? Is there so, is there something up? Is there something going on in your world? Is there something I could help you with? That is a radically different tone than you horrible shrew. Be loving. And then let let her talk. Maybe she's got, I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. And listen genuinely like, okay, maybe there's some missing information here that I just don't have. I'm going to take that and receive that. Now, if Matilda rips your head off, and insists she never yells at her children, well, now you've got a different issue. Now you may need to call in reinforcements. Now you need to ask others to come with you. That's your Matthew 18, 15 through 20 business. But not until then. Scenario number three. You attend the same church as a teenager named Brandon. You overhear some kids from the youth group giggling that Brandon has been inappropriate with his girlfriend. Do you overlook this sin like you did the first time you saw Matilda grab at her crab at her son? And I think the answer is no, you don't put that off. This is now suddenly this is this is a, a big sin cuz well, look, by co- Sometimes a parent can be short. I'm not I'm overlooking the sin, but let's be honest. We, we can all have a tone that is just out of step with what we typically talk like. And that isn't something worth pouncing on unless it becomes a pattern. See, Matilda had a pattern of sin. Brandon is potentially doing something very harmful to, for him, very harmful for the girl, and potential long-term repercussions from this. I want to talk to him. So... I think, though, before I do that, I want to talk to the people who are saying that. Hey, you guys, come on over here. I heard you talking about Brandon. Tell me what's up. Because it might be that you have to talk to them first and say, you know what, that's speculative gossip. You need to be very careful about this. And you might want to clean up this mess before you make it an even bigger spill. If it's not true, tell them to repent and stop gossiping. If it is true... You should still tell the kids to stop gossiping and then ask Brandon if the rumor is true. And depending on his response, you could talk to his folks. It depends on how he acts. Get that information in. But I think that's a bigger, more urgent scenario. This is scenario number four. And Tony, by that head shake, it looks like you don't agree with me about something. Is that correct, sir? Actually, I did. I was surprised. Because first want- I would talk to the people babbling because I'm wondering what good the babbling's doing. Well, and it, it's, it could be nothing but gossip. <laughs> That's and what I don't want to yeah. think that about Brandon and his girlfriend. I want to be hoping the best. So, hey, let's, uh, you know what, I overheard, so now I'm privy to. Sup. And if they're like, well, I mean, we don't know for sure, but, like, it's possible because there was, like, this tweet. And somebody was talking about something <laughs> dirty, and then I, I think they forwarded it to Brandon. My friend heard from Cassie's cousin's mom. Yeah. That. Yeah, well, no, sorry. Yeah, exactly. That would be my starting point, frankly. Scenario number four. You walk into your pastor's office to grab a book for your Sunday school class. And you see a pornographic image on his computer screen. Do you approach him? Tony, do you talk to the pastor when you've seen something very inappropriate on his computer? I might ask ask about that. Uh, Yeah, I think so too. Hey, whoa, pastor, what's that? Is that, did, and, because you don't know, it's not a, hey, you scumbag, what are you looking at? No, he's your pastor. It should be done doubly reverently because he's an elder in the faith. Maybe you bring it up to him and say, oh, pastor, um, look at that image on your computer screen. What's my tone? I'm assuming that there's, he doesn't know about this or he's not aware of this. And if he, if he looks at it and goes, ah, where did that come from? Because, you know, weird things happen on computer. Ah, I am so sorry. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Uh, 
let's bring in the technician. Let's bring in some other elders. I want them to know about this. We are going to get this cleaned up. We got to get a better filter on this computer. Then it's done, right? It's done. Scenario five, you walk into your pastor's office and you catch him actively looking at pornography. Now, that's a different, you, you know for a fact, that's a different scenario. Dealing with issues of judgment, it requires thought, it requires rules, it requires a heart that is, is not the accusatory tone that I hear so often in discernment ministries. Now remember, when we're talking about rank false teachers, yeah, you don't want to sin, but you know, have at them. Have it, you know, just, that's, that's a different tone. Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs, sons of hell. Strong language can be invoked, but there are rules to this game of discernment. This is Wretched Radio. 